Thank you, Dr. Karp. Thank you so much. And hello to all my friends. Thank you, Dr. Hanavar, for the invitation. And it's wonderful to be here with all of you. So I am a, a cornea specialist and have developed a, a wonderful practice of ocular surface uh, neoplasia. And today I'm going to share with you the most common tumor that we have, which is um, squamous carcinoma of the conjunctiva. I have no financial interest to disclose, but I will be discussing off-label use of patients. And I want to thank my fellow Sarah Wall and Despina Theodica, and all of my friends. So um, ocular surface squamous neoplasia or OSSN is a spectrum of disease which goes from mild neoplasia to intraepithelial disease, in situ disease, and then invasive squamous cell carcinoma. And as I said, it is the most common uh, ocular surface tumor that I see and that we see, and it has many features which are gelatinous, papillary, and opalescent. And the risk factors, number one, is light, um, but immunosuppression, human papillomavirus are also cofactors. And the question really is, do we do chemo or do we cut? So Dr. Hanovar is gonna talk about the cut. And today I'm talking to you about topical chemotherapy of which I'm a great fan. The main ones we'll be talking about are mitomycin, 5-FU and interferon, but there are other options too. I've used uh, uh, retinoic acid and a new publication is now out by Dr. Ib uh, using a combination of interferon and uh, retinoic acid, I've used sodafovir, but the main ones we'll talk about are the top three. So when I see a tumor in my clinic, um, of course, I see here, I look for the papillary features, some leukoplakia, fimbriated vessels, feeder vessels, and we take pictures, but I like to have in my mind an image of the tumor, and it helps me remember it. So when I look here, this to me looks a little bit like a hot dog and a bun and a skewer. So I see here a little hot dog on a bun, which is not very good for me because I don't eat beef. But as an ocular oncologist, I really don't like it because this is a neoplastic lesion. I'm a big fan of something called high resolution OCT and every patient of mine gets scanned and it really helps me confirm a diagnosis and it also helps me while I treat the patient to make sure the lesion goes away completely. What you see here is a high resolution OCT of that hot dog lesion. You see here thickened hyperreflective epithelium and an abrupt transition from normal. And these are the classic features that you see with OSSN on high resolution OCT. So what is this lesion then? Could be that it's a skewered hot dog. Uh, it's an ocular surface squamous neoplasia. So I decided to treat him uh, topically. I used 5-fluorouracil, 1% eye drops. I use it four times a day for one week. I give them three weeks off and I repeat the cycles. In general, it's four cycles that I need to do to cure the majority of the tumors. So here's the patient, the 5-FU topically, and this was with four cycles. And this is how the patient looked after four one-week cycles. It worked like magic. So surgery, we'll hear about from Dr. Hanovar. It definitely works. It is diagnostic and therapeutic and is the gold standard. But we can't guarantee that we get free margins all the time. And I'm not going to go through the technique because Dr. Hanovar is going to talk about this. Uh, but it is the gold standard. And the problem is, is that with positive margins, you have a high risk for recurrence. And even with negative margins, you can have a significant rate of recurrence. And the problem is, is that we don't see, we guess. It says, okay, well, here's the tumor. Let's take four millimeters. We do a no touch technique, dry, but we can't guarantee that we're gonna get everything out. And cryotherapy, of course, with alcohol. And sometimes they don't heal as pretty as we like, or my main concern, especially as a cornea specialist, is that we kill all the stem cells. And then these patients end up with stem cell deficiency and need a slit. 
So the rationale for medical therapy is that it allows me to treat the entire ocular surface is uh, then treating subclinical disease and microscopic disease. And it avoids the extensive surgeries that can cause complications. When I face with a tumor that's big, some of people say to me, oh, I don't want to treat it with medicine because it's too big. I think that's the perfect patient to start on medical therapy because most of the time you're going to cure it. And if not, you will chemo reduce it. So what are my options? I have nicknames for all my, my drops so that my patients remember them. And so my three main doors of options are mitomycin, which is my devil drop, or as in Miami, we say Cota del Diablo, 5-FU, which is my little devil, which is Diablito, and my angel drop is interferon because it's so well tolerated. So for mitomycin, we're very familiar with this in ophthalmology. I use 0.04%. I use it four times a day for a week. And then I do one or two weeks off until the eye is white and quiet. I think it's very important to wait for the eye to be completely healed with no epitheliopathy, because if you've broken down the epithelium on the cornea, that's really when you're gonna have more of the toxicity from mitomycin. I do use a plug, steroids, artificial tears. And in the US, it's very expensive. I know in India, it's much more of a bargain, but we charge $400 a bottle and it is compounded, of course, and it does work uh, well, but the toxicity is what I don't like. And here's a patient uh, who was treated with mitomycin and after two cycles, you'll see that there's a nice uh, resolution. OCT helps me because I can watch the tumor go away and I can pick up subclinical disease. And we recently published our series where when I thought it was gone, and I did my OCT, about 17% of the patients still had a little bit of subclinical disease, which means we want to do a little bit more than when you think it's completely gone. And so here on the OCT, remember, thickened hyperreflective epithelium. That's what we see here. I treated this patient with mitomycin. And then you see dark, thin, normalized epithelium. The complications of mitomycin are not kind. It causes epitheliopathy, punctal stomonosis, and stem cell deficiency. 5-FU is now my favorite way of treating this because it works and because it's very low cost. It is uh, $50, between $38 and $50 um, for a cycle. And I use it one week on, three weeks off, as we showed in the patient with the hot dog. And in general, it's about four cycles, but it can be six or eight or Sometimes it goes away in two, but I always do four. We've published on this showing that it's very efficacious and it's also equal and comparable to treatment with interferon. So here's a patient with a nice big juicy cauliflower on his eye an OSSN. And I treated this with my four cycles of 5-FU, 1%, remember one week at a time with a nice a resolution which is very easy and very inexpensive. And it's magic. Complications are really not as bad as, my, as mitomycin. Some patients get a little bit of a red eye. Mostly it's more at the lid and I have them use some Vaseline um, to the lower eyelid skin to prevent any excoriation and steroid and tears as necessary. Interferons were my favorite way of treating. I think Carol may remember, she calls me the interferon lady a long time ago. And I really loved interferons um, because this is immunotherapy. It's produced by our white cells and it has both um, antineoplastic and uh, antiviral properties. And it's used in the, uh, in the body for other viral based um, and uh, neoplastic tumors. Uh, I use it both as an eye drop which is 1 million international units per ml QID. And this is a drop that you give every day. Um, it's well tolerated and everyday use is just fine. Remember the other two are cycled. And I also give subconjunctival injections. I do 3 million international units um, and a half a cc. I do this now once a week. Originally when I started my protocols, it was three times a week because that's what was done for hepatitis when I sort of made this up. Um, I do it once a week now. It's much easier for the patients. And 
Um, I'm little Carol, Carol Shields, you're big Carol. I give 3 million, she gives 10 million once a month. So I do 1 million once a week and others do 10 million uh, once a month. Now, I love it because it's gentle, but it has been become crazy expensive in the United States and difficult to obtain. So we charge now $800 a month for topical interferon. And I know in India, you guys have it for a dollar. I mean, it's very inexpensive and it's, it's amazing that you can have access to that that is so uh, inexpensive. But in the States, it's become crazy. So here's a patient that failed 5-FU. I tried the inexpensive way, but it did not respond. And you see here this gelatinous lesion for her. And so she took the interferon. We have to pay out of pocket here, the patients. And after two months, this was a nice, beautiful response to talk to interferon. And I always do four months. And what I wanna mention about our study is that if you don't have the OCT to confirm that the entire surface is completely normalized, then when you see it gone, you need to do another six to eight weeks of interferon or another two cycles of 5-FU just to ensure that you're eradicating all subclinical disease. And we found that once you did this extra cycles, two months, six weeks, then our recurrence rate was zero. So here we go, this patient here with the gelatinous lesion, you see the thickened hyperreflective epithelium. And after interferon, then you see this nice, thin, normalized dark epithelium. The corneal lesions are a little more challenging. First of all, they're often misdiagnosed. So someone may say it's a panis, they may call it a Salzman's, they may call it mapped out fingerprint dystrophy, depends what it looks like. And the problem for surgical removal is that the limbus may look normal. And we know that it originates from the limbus and then you're doing a guess. You're killing and sacrificing cells that may have tumor or may not have tumor. So I love topical therapy for these corneal lesions. And here's a patient that I treated topically with interferon for five months. So in summary, mitomycin, I use 0.4 for a week on and a week and then two weeks, so three weeks off and a punctal plug. I call it my gota del diablo because of the epitheliopathy pain and stem cell deficiency. I love interferon um, and I used it for many, many years since the early 90s. I use it four times a day, every day or inject it three million. Uh, the problem is it's just become very expensive in the United States that is prohibitive for many patients. Um, the injections do give a flu-like syndrome, so you need to use um, acetaminophen and, and warn them about that. And now 5-FU is my favorite because it's easy. It's one week on, three weeks off. It's an easy cycling. It's well tolerated and it's a real bargain. So that's my cota del diablito. And remember the number four, four months of a minimum of interferon, four cycles, et cetera. So chemo or cut. Um, so if, well, if you have a patient that there's a doubtful diagnosis, you need to cut. If you have a patient who's willing to put in their eye drops like this little cat, great. If they're not gonna be compliant, they need surgery. And is one better? Really, we found that they're both excellent options. So I think you need to judge it based on the tumor. Recurrent lesions, annular lesions, diffuse lesions are best treated medically. Um, and if a patient doesn't want surgery, then topical uh, treatment is excellent. And I treat the vast majority of my primary lesions uh, with uh, topical. The other thing I love to talk about is high resolution OCT. I make this little joke here that I feel like I'm operating. Now I have an N95 on my, my face, but this is just a regular mask, but I have a blindfold. That's what I feel like because I can't see the edges of where my tumor is. And the OCT really helps me. And this was first a custom device built by my colleague, Jay Wang. And now I use commercially available devices that really help me see. So back to our patient with the hot dog, here's his conjunctival tumor. We see the thickened hyperreflective epithelium. Remember, I treated him with 5-FU and you see that now he has thin normalized uh, epithelium. So I know that I'm done. So in summary then, a surgery, which we'll hear about in a few moments with Dr. Hanavar is very successful, but when they're large tumors, annular recurrent, um, you can get complications. Topical medications 
are especially helpful in those scenarios and corneal, but also the vast majority of primary tumors will go away with topical medications. And if they don't, you see them back in six weeks or eight weeks, then you can change your plan and take it off. 